So before we start, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters uh, for the continued support making all of these tutorials possible. I especially want to thank Chris Hebert for being uh, for being a top Patreon. So uh, thanks, Chris. And um, if you aren't supporting already, you can go to patreon.com slash Tim van Helsdingen. And I have a lot of cool exclusive content there. So uh, if you like all of the free tutorials that I'm doing, uh, hop over there and see a lot of cool exclusive content that you cannot, cannot find on Vimeo. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Right, so today we're going to talk about uh, time offsetting uh, instances based on attributes. There was actually something that I didn't really quite figure out until like a week ago. Um, and it's actually quite simple and I have no idea how it took me so long to figure this out. I was uh, I was at end user event uh, and I was talking to uh, to Toadstorm there about how you could do disk based instancing and they said mobs had a tool for it. Um, couldn't get the mobs tool to work, it still has some has some errors. So perhaps there's also uh, something in mobs to do this, but um, found another way in the meanwhile to get this to work. Um, so I'm going to explain that and I think it's quite interesting to, to do this. And if the mobs workflow has a better workflow, you might also want to check that out. Um, couldn't get that to work yet, but um, we're going to go over how to get uh, disk based caches to time offset. So like we're going to copy some, some simulations to a grid and then we're going to time offset uh, each instance based on an attribute. Um, and that's, well, it's going to be quite interesting and pretty simple actually. So let's dive into that. So first let's just do a simple, uh, just a rigid body simulation. So just like create a box and uh, let's move it up. And let's just, let's just use shelf tools to do all of the uh, shattering type stuff. So let's just do uh, shatter. I'm not going to go into how all, of the, how, how all of that stuff works anyway. Just going to do shelf tools now to set all the simulation stuff up because this is not going to be a simulation tutorial. So just very basic breaking this thing down. So now we have a, uh, have a box that's falling apart. Now let's cache this box to disk. So a file cache. Normally I use all of these preset stuff above here, but for now let's just do a slash hip slash sim slash uh, box slash and then do um, box fee. Uh, let's do box one and then dollar f dot video dot sc. So this is going to be the it's version one. This is going to be dollar uh, f. It needs to be dollar f, else it's not going to work for for for, for what we're going to do. Let me just remove all of the uh, like the versioning stuff that I usually use. We don't really need it for this. Um, and let's just save maybe like 75 frames or something. So let's save it to disk and let's load it. And then we have falling box. Easy enough. All right. So let's uh, now go over how we're going to uh, so, if, uh, so that's how we're gonna go over um, how we're gonna insist this on a grid and then time time offset it based on attributes. Right. So let's first name our stuff. Maybe so we'll call this um, sim box. Maybe and this is just gonna be the ground plane. And then we're gonna make a another geometry node. And let's hide this. Go in here. Make a grid. So something like that. Maybe make it a little bit like 50 by 50. Make it a little bit bigger. And let's scatter some points on it. Copy points. And now we want to get our instances on here. All right. So normally what you would do is you would object merge your thing into here and then you would you go copy two points and then you do a pick an instance and then you'd have your copies falling. Um, this is not what we're going to do. We're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, let's remove that. We're going to do it with a, uh, with an, with an instance attribute and we're going to point it to the, uh, to our box. So let's make an attribute wrangle. 
and let's make a uh, string and call it path. Uh, so string path equals uh, channel s path, and let's create it as a slider. So I dive in here, and let's just copy this path, put it in here. And now we have so we have a string called path, and now let's say s at instance path is path. So now we get a string attribute called instance path, and it's gonna point basically to the location of where we cached out our box simulation. So we have this uh, this path, and this instance path attribute can be used. Um, with the instance sub. So if you look at this instance sub, as you can see right now, all of our geometry appears. Just like if we were to do it with a copy to points like we did before with the object merge and then merging in, merging in this thing. So let's uh, back in instance. As you can see, it's, uh, it's, doing, it's doing basically the same. It's just looking at the instance path attribute. But because now it's a wrangle, we can start manipulating this. So let's start doing that. All right, so now let's start thinking a little bit about uh, stuff that we need. So let's first, uh, let's make sure we don't use this for now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this from the, uh, from the extension. So let's remove it. And we're gonna add it back with some uh, with some, with some wrangles, and then we're gonna add it back to, to the path, but we can, then we can use wrangles to uh, to start manipulating that. So we have the reference uh, still over here. Maybe let's just add it back, back here so we can see what we're doing a little bit easier. All right, so we want a version. So let's do uh, integer v is channel integer version. But it's gonna be our version, so we now have a version slider. But we we need it to be a um, a string, so let's do string version equals uh, itoa. So itoa converts an integer to a string, and let's do it based on the v. Um, so why why am why am I doing this? Well, we need uh, we need this we need an integer attribute in order to uh, like have a slider. To, uh, to set it, which will also make it easier later if we're gonna do it based on a attribute which is uh, gonna be on our uh, on our grid. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it like this. So I'm defining it here and then I'm setting it as a string. So if I say s at version uh, equals version, and you can see we have we have a version here and it still corresponds to our. So this is a string. It still corresponds to our uh, integer slider over here. All right. So let's remove that again. Uh, so we need something to refer to our frame. So let's say, um, so let's first, cause we're gonna want to offset it. So let's first do a, uh, something for the offset. So let's say in F maybe it's gonna be at frame. So now we have a integer called F and it's gonna equal to the frame. Uh, and maybe we want and some and later we want something for the offset. But let's let's just first just keep it like this. So f is going to be our uh, frame number, um, and we need it to be a string again. So let's do int frame equals uh, so uh, frame go oh, f. And why is this? Why is this erroring? Let's see. Integer f. Oh, yeah, this needs to be a string, obviously. So now we have uh, this as a string. So again, as at frame equals frame, just if you want to double check and see, we have our frames as a string. Again, we need it to be a string in order to append it to our path. All right. So, and now let's make a string called extern. We need uh, ext 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 so for the extension, and it's going to be dot bgo dot sc so that's going to be our extension sorry now okay now we have all of the uh, all of the necessary ingredients sort of say so let's say 
um, so asset instance path is gonna be okay so now we're, we're gonna do concat so concat is a function and it can add string uh, strings together so let's remove uh, all of this stuff over there so let's add our stuff together so let's say we want to add path then we want to add a version then we want to add our want to add an underscore let's we had that in our thing then we want to add our frame and then we want to add our extension all right so now we get another instance path and you can see it's still it refers to the same uh, to the same thing there and then if we're gonna highlight it here then you can see this all still works and this looks looks more complicated than what we had before um, but of course now we have now that we have it all split up we can start changing stuff around so let's start doing that all right so let's start adding some attributes on our grid so let's just uh, do something simple and interactive let's add like a sphere and let's do a let's create attribute wrangle or maybe just use use a color make it make it easy so we can see what we're doing so let's make this black like that and then like let's make this one white all right and then let's do a attribute transfer and then so we have this let's transfer the color uh, let's blend it out a little bit like that All right so now we have just a simple interactive thing where we can move this around so maybe we just put it a little bit to the corner and increase our blend width so okay right now so we have we have this this value right like that and it's gonna be roughly from zero so let's have it go from uh from zero to one something like that all right so now we can use this attribute to start uh, offsetting our um, our instances all right so let's go into our wrangle and let's do something with our uh, with our offset so let's do a uh, integer called offset and let's set that it's let's fit our at c dot x let's fit it to so be from zero to one and let's fit it to from zero to maybe 20. so we're gonna set our uh, have our offset uh be zero to 20 frames basically and then let's add it so um let's add it to the f so that's plus offset so now our frame is going to be the offset all right so now let's highlight our instance and now you can see we have offset our instances so it's also let me make it make it make it a little bit different all right now they're gonna spawn let's just put it put it put it back uh, like it was but you can see so it's it's acting a little bit crazy in the viewport with like going to black and going to uh, to what and I don't know I, f I think this is a viewport bug because you don't see it when you're when you render when you render it's absolutely fine uh, it just uh, it happens in the viewport no idea why but um, that's what happens um, so yeah the time offsetting works so let's um, randomize one more thing let's uh, randomize the version so maybe also make a version where it's a uh, sphere instead of a box so let's uh, do it like that uh, let's go to to here so now it's a sphere let's make it a uh, make it a polygon let's save this out as being a version 2 so let's save it so now we have a uh, if it's, oh, I need to move it up a little bit. When it starts out, let's uh, do that. There we go. So we have a sphere falling. Um, and then let's go in here. 
and let's in our wrangle randomize our uh, version a little bit so instead of so in here we're using a um, a version so let's just do something different let's say um, integer rent is going to be a random based on the, the point number uh, and we're gonna round it to being an integer so then it's going to be from 0 to 1 and why is it erroring and at point number, I'm not sure why this is erroring uh, round integer round and plus one why is this not working if I make it a float will it work again still erroring um, let's see what's going on here let's put it like this oh okay I'm I'm completely stupid I need to give it a name obviously uh, so let's get set v name um, name equals rent so that works um, so let's copy this let's remove this let's just put it in the version instead of the slider let's put it like that um, so now we're gonna have a random version but it's gonna be from 0 to 1 so that's not correct so let's add 1 to it uh, so now it's gonna be either version 1 or version 2 now we're gonna highlight the instance so let's go over here and let's play and now we have either boxes or spheres being randomly time offset and randomly dropping down so let's just make a little flip book here and again i don't know what's up with the few with the with the viewport flipbook thing but believe me this looks fine if you render it so it's uh it's a weird it's a weird viewport thing But as you can see, this works. Uh, this works quite well. I, I was like, I'm, I feel quite stupid for not figuring this out earlier. If I'm, if I'm completely honest, I was working on something a while ago and I couldn't figure out how to how to do this. But as you can see, this works. Uh, this works quite fine. So uh, yeah, hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, again. If you want to see some Patreon exclusive stuff, uh, go to patreon.com slash Jim Van Helsing. I have some super cool advanced stuff, uh, like multi-hour tutorials on um, how I did, uh, like the, if you have seen my uh, my Jeep driving through the muddy, muddy water stuff, I have a course on that. Um, a lot of other cool stuff. So make sure to head to Patreon um, to check that out. And of course, you can also get the hip file for this, uh, for this, this, this particular tutorial on my Patreon. So uh, hopefully you learned a lot and uh, I will talk to you next time. Bye.